When I was around eight years old, I thought I was the bravest person in the world. When other kids would scream on roller coaster, tremble before heights, and cower when facing insects, I would simply laugh and act as if all of their fears were silly childish things. From my childhood perspective, I thought it was ever so effortless to simply bundle up the courage and face the world. That was till I reached the fifth grade, and I had a huge science project that ate up a chunk of my grade. I experienced the nerves firsthand. Forehead sweaty, palms clammy, legs jiggling. It was, pro it was perhaps one of the worst feelings I had ever experienced. Fear is a common emotion that causes an, in, an individual the most helplessness, the most uneasiness, and the most discomfort. It is possibly one of the most powerful emotions because it is literally built into our systems, playing the role of our animal instincts to protect us from harm. But what is the science behind fear? What causes it, and why is it so important? Let's take a look. Fear, a powerful emotion that grips us, paralyzes us, and holds us back from achieving our goals. The, fearing, the feeling of fear lurks the depths of our mind, crawling about and whispering its unwanted voice of insecurity. And whispering its unwanted voice of insecurity. However, despite the common and the degrading stereotype that fear is only for little kids or weak people, fear is a completely natural reaction that happens to everybody. And it's quite important to not only accept our fears, but learn to overcome them and utilize them as well. So let's delve into this vast topic today as I take you alongside this journey in exploring the mysteries of fear. This is your hypothalamus. It is a part in your brain which controls things like heart rate, mood, and hunger. It is also the key player in an effect that goes on inside your body called the fight or flight effect. Once you experience something that frightens you, your hypothalamus sends stress hormones, such as adrenaline, to your sympathetic nervous system in your adrenal cortical system, which in turn prom prompts these hormones to circulate your body and cause side effects such as increase in heart rate and breathing rate and, the change, and a change in the flow of the direction of your blood to happen, flowing away from your heart and, in, and into your limbs, causing, act, uh, resulting in you being able to act more quickly. However, what causes fear and why are some people afraid of certain things? Science says humans have only two innate fears the fear of loud noises, and the fear of falling. All other fears are developed or learned. All learned fears can develop from a negative experience or environmental factors. For instance, if I were always told that spiders are horrible, harmful creatures, even if I have never encountered one, then when I do meet one, I would feel afraid. This is contrary to me being told that spiders are completely normal and harm harmless creatures then the chances of me being afraid the next time I encounter a spider are much less. Fear can also originate from a negative experience, say the spider bit me or crawled into my hair. Then, the next time I encounter a spider, my brain would link this negative experience to the spiders and I would feel afraid. However, if I had positive experience beforehand, say I kept one as a pet, then the next time I encounter a spider, I would, feel, I, I would react more positively to them that many people confuse phobias and fears, but they are two completely separate things. Fear is an in-the-moment reaction that happens when your body feels as if it's in danger. However, a phobia has a lead-on fear reaction even when your mind does not think it is in danger. As you can see, a larger percentage of women seem to tend to develop phobias rather than men, and they seem to happen below the age of 18. There are many different kinds of phobias. Some of the most common ones include the fear of spiders, arachnophobia, the fear of heights, acrophobia, and the fear of enclosed spaces, claustrophobia. However, there are more peculiar ones. Some of the most mind-blowing include the fear of numbers, arithmophobia, the fear of the color yellow, xanthrophobia, and the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth, ar arachiphobia. Phobia and fear can be such negative words, though. However, fear is so crucial that without it, disastrous consequences can occur. To show you the severity of this, I would like to share with you a quote I made. To fear something that shouldn't be feared, it's not really fear at all. It's your own overthinking. Fear is meant to be activated in situations where your body can sense potential harm. However, if there is no harm around you, then being afraid is, is like taking an umbrella outside when it isn't raining. Your fear is like your shield. Your fear is like your shield, which protects you from harm and, and activates your fight or flight. 
using your shield unnecessarily is completely pointless. For example, if I were to be standing in a lion's den and this lion was about to eat me, obviously I would be afraid. Any person would. But if I were to be standing in front of an insect which I could ever so easily squash, then panicking is not required. However, you may be saying, but Mary, some people can't control their fears, and you would be absolutely correct. As Mark Twain once said, courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, but not absence of fear. You can overcome your fears. It is possible. One of the most highly recommend, recommended methods is talking treatment or talking therapy in which you voice your thoughts, opinions, and feelings to a trained professional. The first step to overcoming your phobias is awareness. You must come to terms with yourself about your fear and actually want to overcome it. Another highly recommended method is self-exposure therapy in which a psychologist creates a safe and friendly environment for their patients to to help them get comfortable with their fear, fears and, and gradually expose them to them. Uh, yes, I know, I know. Basic solutions that may seem common or general. But never fear. I've come up with my own solutions that have really helped me out over the years that you can try at home too. So let's take, for example, one of my childhood fears, the fear of spiders, arachnophobia. What I did to overcome with my fear was get first, firstly get used to the idea of my fear. I would search up images of spiders, starting with the friendly and cutesy looking ones and moving on to the more ferocious looking ones and eventually would get comfortable with looking at them. Then, that's when I knew I was finally ready to meet one. And the, next time I, and the next time I encountered a spider, I was completely comfortable around it, eventually after I got used to it. As you can tell, as you can tell getting used to the idea of your fear is the first step to overcoming it. You can't jump into ba battle with your worst fear and expect to win. However, so far we've been speaking of fear and phobia as negative emotions. But if everybody hated being afraid, then why do horror movies and haunted houses exist? Well, the truth is, some people love being afraid. And it's all in relevance to the side effects going on inside you. As mentioned before, when you, when you experience fear, there is an adrenaline rush that goes on inside you. And in short boosts, this rush can feel euphoric, elating, and thrilling, and is commonly referred to as a natural high state of mind. This is why the horror genre is so popular nowadays. Understanding our fear and the signs behind them is the first step to overcoming and accepting them. You need to tell yourself that it's okay to feel afraid sometimes, and it's not something shameful. Now, with all the understanding we gain today, we can allow ourselves to explore new opportunities and never let fear hold us back from achieving our greatest. Fear is only an obstacle in a vast plan of success. When I was eight years old, I thought I was the bravest person in the world. Today, I understand that bravery is not the number of fears you have, but the power you possess to overcome it. As Clemon Stone once said, thinking will not overcome fear, but action will. Thank you.